Today, we revive the 1700 horsepower four-wheel drive drag truck project, add a little power to our S10, and discuss plans to get this 535 cubic inch big block back together and race ready. Alrighty guys, it's time to add a little bit of fun to the S10 project. Uh, we got a 4.3 V6 under the hood. It's not gonna be the engine that stays in this very long. In fact, a couple of months probably I'll be driving it. Um, the speedometer is incorrect, which kind of bugs me as I'm driving it because we changed the gear ratio, we changed the tire size. So I'm like, I've got the software. Why don't I just make those changes? And at the same time, just mess around, add a little bit of power. Um, so I'm not expecting anything uh, major at all to happen, but like I said, it's kind of for fun. We definitely can wake this 4.3 up a tiny bit, you know, lean it out a little bit during the power enrichment, add a little bit more spark timing, uh, change shift points, and of course, correct the speedometer and other stuff that just kind of annoys me. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing a little bit of today. And then I think I'll have time to get my 535 big block back to the shop, get it on an engine stand, and then work on the top end because that's been sitting in my house garage since well let's see it's now december 6th that's been sitting in the garage since probably april so it's time we work on it So I apologize in advance if this wind noise makes this clip on barrel, but I wanted to give a quick overview of what this project is because it's been drawn out over a very long time and hopefully by the time it's done, it's going to be very fast. Um, I originally started this whole project with an engine in mind because um, if you're familiar with my ugly truck project, this guy right here, um, it's got a junkyard uh, 8.1 and it's been rebuilt and stuff, but when I first put this together and turbocharged it, I was really concerned with how long the stock bottom end was gonna last. I was, you know, just if you believe what you read on the internet, anything above five pounds of boost, this thing was just gonna grenade. So I had a backup plan in mind, which is that engine right there. It's a short block now, um, but it's a 535 cubic inch Gen 7 big block Chevy. So the same 8.1 based architecture, but it's a little bit bigger. I think it works out to about 8.8 .8 liters. Um, and I built that thing to the absolute best ability that I could afford. Um, so it's an aftermarket block from PSI. It's got a good crank in it, great rods, great pistons, uh, custom, pretty much everything in there. It's gonna have Raylar aluminum heads, solid roller camshaft. Um, so I, I wanted to make an engine that would hold up to 15 to 1700 horsepower. And at the time my plan was just to replace the Junkyard 8.1, which I think I got the hood popped here. Uh, again, if you're new to the channel, this is, this is the ugly truck. Um, but the stock 8.1 actually lasted and held up much better than I expected. And it still is going great. I mean, we've had 800 horsepower and I'm chasing the nines and I want to do that still in the stock engine. Don't know if it's possible or not, but we'll get back to that next season. But anyhow, um, as the stock 8.1 continued to do so well, I was like, well, it would be a waste just to throw that engine away. We decided let's kind of make that into two projects. And then somewhere along the same line when I was waiting on, I think valve train parts, because that's the other bad thing about that engine out there. Uh, the Gen 7s are kind of an oddball and a lot of parts take forever to get. So while I was waiting for valve train um, and after we competed in LS Fest with the Copo truck, which has since been sold, a lot of you guys ask about that. Um, I decided let's make the ugly truck four wheel drive. So that's kind of what the rest of this chassis turned into a complete other truck, which we don't have the body for just yet, but we'll start at the back. Um, so it's an extended cab short box. We're gonna have some Caltrack spring sliders in there. Caltrack split monoliefs. Has this beautiful fuel cell by DB rods made from aluminum. Um, we've got the atomic fab shock mounts back here. I did a bunch of work to get this to this point already. So we moved this cross member here that used to sit back there to provide room for the tank and make a shock mount, uh, atomic shock mounts in a um, uh, Funk, no, yeah, Funkhauser race cars, um, anti-roll bar, I believe. It's got a God Torque differential 14 bolt semi-floater. I replaced this cross member here with a straight one because normally it's not good. Uh, 
Uh, and then up front, of course, the motor, we talked about that. Um, we've got some custom coilover stuff going on. I originally purchased these as a kit. I uh, did a bunch of modifications on the control arms. It has the aluminum spindle from like a 2013 truck. Um, I built all the spring mounts myself. And so anyway, I just kind of wanted to make this the best possible four-wheel drive drag truck that I possibly could make. I think the goal for that, I don't really know. I'd, I definitely want to be deep into the nines, possibly eights. Um, the truck that eventually goes on that is going to be quite a bit more, um, how do you say, race oriented. So ugly truck here, this is going to be a street truck. It's going to have the full interior. I probably should put a cage in there. It doesn't have one, but I like the stock interior where the truck that that's going to have on top of it is going to be kind of gutted as light as possible. It'll have some creature comforts for like drag and drive stuff, but definitely I want it to be as light as possible because weight is the enemy of speed basically. So um, that's kind of a quick preview of what's going to be going on over the next year. We've got ugly truck. We're trying to get into the nines, 999. We've got the four wheel drive drag truck, which we really just need a body for and start doing like the twin turbos and stuff. And we have the S10, which is going to get hopefully a 6.2 LS. So we've got a lot on our plate over the next few months. So um, my initial goal for today anyway, is I want to get the chassis over to the shop. I want to get the engine pulled out and then we're going to put the chassis in storage for a little bit. So just a little while later, we get the big block mounted up on the engine stand ready for its next phase. And I gotta say, it is kind of tempting just seeing the two of these together because the S10 needs an engine and we just happen to have one. And I kind of joked earlier in the week in a short video about how it would be cool to combine the big block with the S10. And, and don't get me wrong, the power to weight ratio of that truck would probably be a whole lot of fun, you know, 15 to 1700 horsepower in a S10. Yeah, it'll be a blast, but no, we're not gonna do that. Um, the S10 is gonna get an aluminum engine, probably an LS. I thought about an LT, but realistically, an LS engine is what that's gonna get. Um, this is gonna stay for the drag truck, and I'll talk about some of the plans that we have, or some of the next steps, rather, in just a second. But first, um, I wanna circle back to what we talked about earlier, tuning the V6. Um, and for me, the tuning process right now, for this particular truck and engine, um, no, the V6 is not going to be the final engine. So why even, you know, waste our time tuning it? Well, it's fun and I'm kind of nerdy and I like playing with computers and stuff and things like the speedometer being incorrect really, really bug me. And I'm going to be driving the truck probably on and off for the next couple of weeks or month or two. So I just, I want it to be correct. And if I can have some fun playing with the tune, you know, gain experience and practice and all that stuff what the heck why not so i'll just go over a few of the quick things that i change and this is you know basic tuning stuff the first one uh, i got a spreadsheet that i've made that really helps when it comes to tire size and stuff like that you know it's just simple math but you put in the given or the published revolutions per mile because every tire that you buy pretty much you go to like tirerack.com and it'll tell you for this brand of tire in this size how many revolutions it'll go in one mile. So you take that information and you do a little bit of basic math and it'll tell you these two figures down here that you need, um, transmission revolutions per mile and then um, vehicle speed sensor pulses per mile. So anyway, um, not to get caught up in the details of it, but you take that information, you plug it in here and then you can correct your speedometer. And I use my GPS, come on focus. Um, I use a GPS and it is like, spot on and yeah i know hp tuners has some built-in um things that'll automatically do that for you but i found in my experience you get the most accurate results when you use the most accurate information and a little bit of math so anyway other than correcting the speedometer which like i said now is spot on a few other things that we'll do um we'll go into the engine and then spark for example in the spark table we'll add a little bit of spark timing just to kind of get a little bit more power and i think i added uh, at my altitude, we only get to the 80 kPa row under full throttle. Um, so we added four and a half degrees more of timing. We'll do some data logging to see if that's, you know, enough or too much or, or whatever. Um, and then some other things that we do, I leaned it out just a tiny bit under wide open throttle because uh, under power enrichment mode, 
The stock tunes on these things are pretty dang rich. So we just went in this table. And here's another thing. The stock GM computers actually measure air fuel ratio in equivalence ratio rather than like an AFR. But thankfully, or um, I don't know, thankfully, but I built this other spreadsheet here that'll actually take some inputs from the tune and it'll convert the EQ ratio to an AFR. And then down here, I can enter what AFR I want and then it'll spit back out the appropriate EQ ratio. So just some, you know, tuning. It's a fun thing for me. I think everyone should learn to do it. If you've got a fuel injected vehicle, grab some software. It's really not that expensive. And it's for this old truck It's two credits. It's a hundred dollars to be able to get in, gain access and do the tuning. And like I said, it's fun. It's enjoyable for me. And yeah, even though that V6 is going to be coming out, let's have some fun with it while I drive it over the next little bit. So um, that's the S10. Um, it's kind of done-ish for now, of course, until we, we begin the engine swap, but it's now what I call daily driver status. The suspension is fixed, so it's not going to like crash <laughs> because the ball joints wore out. Um, haven't done the all-wheel drive yet, but anyway, enough about the S10. Let's talk about the big block and the next few steps. Um, the last time I actually touched this engine was about a year ago, and this whole big block project has been just a tale of waiting on parts because the Gen 7 big blocks are an oddball. Uh, of course, you had COVID and parts delays in and amongst all that time, I think. Um, I started the 81 swap in, like, in the ugly truck, the junkyard motor. That was in early 2020. And of course, like I mentioned earlier at the time, I was worried that the stock motor would not hold up. So I began this build um, in middle of 2021. So we started out with the block and we got a bunch of, you know, we got pistons, rods, and crank. And then I, as soon as I received those parts, kind of had a change of heart. And I realized, you know what? The original stuff that I ordered wasn't quite strong enough for what I wanted to do. So we switched gears. We got some different pistons, which that was like, shoot, that was like a nine month wait to get this set of pistons. And it was a custom um, dish and it was a custom size and a whole bunch of other stuff. So anyway, and they're coated on top of that. Uh, different rods we ordered. We got some, uh, we got a solid roller can. We got some different lifters in here. Um, so we spent a bunch of time waiting. The very last thing that I had to wait on is I think I ordered my, it all, you know, blends together now, but I ordered the valve train. I got a really, really trick set of TND shaft mount rockers for this thing that fit the rail hour aluminum heads. And I placed that order, I think, at the tail end of 2021. I didn't get those until the middle of 2022. And then by the time I got them, I was well into the like four wheel drive chassis build and I kind of put the motor aside. Um, then of course we bought the shop. We moved from Utah to Colorado. And this whole time the engine has just been sitting, thankfully protected, but just been sitting in the drag truck chassis. So it's now time that we get working on it at least i want to get the engine at least together i know the whole truck project is going to take some time but we're going to get the heads bolted on we are going to uh, the oil pan is not permanently installed because i have to put a windage tray on which again you guessed it custom stuff so i get a i have a big block chevy windage tray that's going to take some modification i got to get the oil pump in the oil pump drive the pickup tube i'm going to try to put some sort of a like a trap door system in the bottom of the pan to keep oil under control. And then uh, heads on, intake on, at least the engine will be buttoned up, ready to plop into a chassis. That's kind of my, my next goal for this build anyway, is just to get the engine done, buttoned up. And then once I have it ready, I can figure out what truck is gonna go on top of the chassis. And then we can start building the turbo kit around it. I do wanna do twins. Um, it is four wheel drive, so I have to build a transmission and then like, that's the point where I stopped thinking about it because I probably need to spend another, oh goodness, another lot of money <laughs> to get it to where it runs and drives. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I know we didn't do a whole lot of actual work in this video. Um, Chris was out with the flu this week, so I had to do a lot of uh, just shop type work. So we didn't get much time to do goofing off stuff, but that's all right. Um, thank you guys for watching. Come back soon.